Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. My name is Keen McGrath, I'm one of the correspondents for Cork City this season and uh, here with something a little bit different, a football manager experiment for everyone at home. Um, obviously, Air Trips League has been cancelled and we've got no domestic Irish football for the next while but I just thought maybe we'd load up a game of football manager and uh, have a look at how they think the season might have played out. So, obviously in front of me here, I shouldn't really point my hands, I'll point my mouse. Um, we have, unfortunately, I can't load in the first five games of the season whereby, you know, we all know the way it went. Shamrock Rovers winning their first five, my own Cork City winning just one, and Sligo Rovers bottom of the table with no points after four of their games. But, um, yeah, just a quick run through before we start, I suppose. Look, all teams on zero points, um, clicking through. As far as I'm aware, most of the squads are pretty up to date. Um, Cork City having their loan signings in. Um, players like Olo, who's featured on the channel. Um, according to Football Manager, ahead of the new season, they're predicting Shamrock Rovers, who as the favourites to win the league. Obviously, the first five games of the season, that played out to be the case um, after a fantastic start. Uh, and Football Manager suggesting that the teams likely to go down would be Finn Harps bottom and uh, Shelburne in the relegation playoff spot. Um, my Cork City, like I said, uh, despite their poor start of the season, Football Manager thinks they have a chance of coming seventh. But obviously, if you look at the bookies' odds here, we can see a bit of a gap between the bottom four and the top six. Um, something a lot of people would have predicted in real life as well, but perhaps surprising to see Sligo Rovers in such a strong spot according to the game. But yeah, look, um, that's just a quick introduction. Um, I'll catch you back, maybe we'll come in after the fifth game of the season, see where things lie in Football Ranger compared to real life. So yeah, it would be unlike me if everything went exactly according to plan. Um, we've actually gone six games ahead, so one game ahead of where we would be in real life. But as you can see... Um, there's the league table ahead of you, Cork City bottom with just two points, no wins in the first six. Of course, there's one in their first five before uh, the current pandemic hit. Bohemians with a poor start just above them. And Shelburne, Harps and Derry all on five points. But the clear one there is Dundalk winning their first six games, with an, so leading the league with 18 points, already a six-point gap ahead of Shamrock Rovers. We'll have a quick look through some of the stats after these games. Um, Unlike, uh, sorry, much like in real life, the games uh, the goals uh, spread around. Obviously, Graham Burke, uh, the leader in real life after his haul against Cork City. But um, we can see a lot of players on three goals. So um, a decent start to the season for those players. Patrick Holbin, the standout player here, with an average of 8 out of 10 for the first six games. Of course, scoring his three goals. If we click into him, his three goals, one coming for penalty and two Man of the Match awards in just three League of Ireland appearances. Uh, not seeing uh, regular game time with Dundalk. Um, as much as he would in real life perhaps but um, yeah look aside from that that's just a quick look in we'll have a look at Cork City see what's going on with them after their poor start obviously you can see look a draw against Slimer, or Sligo Rover, sorry, first game of the season then a defeat at Derry uh, draw at home to Bowes a heavy defeat away, away at uh, Shamrock Rovers perhaps showing just how realistic the game is before losing away to Dundalk and at home to Pats now a couple of um, perhaps more favourable games coming up Shelburne away, always a tough game, but uh, one that they might look to get a result from. Uh, Finn Harps and then Sligo. So, yeah, look, that's uh, that's the start of the season. If we click into Dundalk, we can see how they've started. Incredibly strong start of the season. 3-0, confident win over Shamrock Rovers in the President's Cup. And then a 3-1 win over Waterford, 2-1 to Sligo. And then, as you can see, while some narrow wins here, three two one victories in a row before a three one away win in Tala. So obviously Dundalk looking like the team to beat early on. Um, so we're back just over a month later, and uh, things really not looking up for my uh, my team Cork City. Uh, just one win so far this season at home to Derry. It'll be interesting to see if Neil Fenn is still in the job. But looking to the rest of the table. Dundalk starting to really build a commanding lead over Shamrock Rovers and a surprise run from Waterford in third level with Shamrock Rovers obviously Rovers still having that game in hand perhaps Finn Harps haven't played up all of their um, their games in hand from previously postponed games but if we look into Dundalk we can have a quick look at their schedule and it really is a strong season so far obviously just after we left um, for another bit of simulation Pats beat them a 2-0 win before Waterford beating them so uh, yeah, it appears they're still unbeaten at home, but some 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 um, strong performances by Pats and a bit of a surprise package in Waterford, third in the league. Obviously, a few good signs there like Brian Murphy, Ty Ryan from Cork City, Graham and Co Graham Cummins. But if you look at the the stats of the players, no out, no um stand goal scorer who stands out. Three for Cummins, four for O'Connor, 
interesting to see where they're going. But this is Andre Burley, the centre half, with three goals so far this season. So perhaps operating well from set pieces, who knows. But um, back to the league, top scorer overall, obviously with Dundalk running away, strong performances, Georgie Kelly with five, Hoban and Duffy with four, and then a long list of players on three, including Denzel Fernandez from Shelburne, Darrell O'Connor from Cork City, so a little bit of a, a spread around, but going back to the league. Uh, standard performances, Stefan Kolo Kolovic, sorry for my pronunciation, the Serbian attacker signed by Dundalk during the summer, obviously uh, a lot of interest in him at the time, and he, football manager reckons he's a good signing. Um, so he's the standout player along with Dave, Georgie Kelly so far and Graham and Cummins at Waterford. Um, not to dwell too much on Cork City, but have a quick look at what's happened there. Oh, interesting to see Neil Fenn has been sacked and an interesting decision from uh, Declan Carey to hire Roddy Collins as manager. Um, if we look at, he has taken over um, actually quite shortly after we, we simulated. So he has overall uh, at Cork City managed five games won three and lost two so perhaps not the the strangest of decisions obviously some of those games were against Cove Wanderers and Galway but after defeats against Sligo um sorry perhaps that was Fenn but uh, we can't be sure um but defeats against Sligo and Waterford they have beaten Derry so things may be starting to turn up for Roddy Collins's Cork City um we'll look through the rest of the league teams Bohemian still with Keith Long Declan, Declan Devine still at Derry Vinnie Purcell at Dundalk, so most things appearing to be just about the same. In fact, I think Cork City are the only team to have let their manager go. So that's a rather interesting one. Roddy Collins, an interesting decision. Um, let's see what Neil Fenn is up to. Um, he's unemployed. He was sacked at Cork City after seven games of the season, three draws and one defeat. Um, a big fan of Fenn in real life, obviously, but entirely objectively. Um, perhaps not a unusual decision given the poor form but um, yeah maybe we'll have a quick look at the Irish national team see how they're getting on um, if people would be interested in another one of these experiments maybe looking at uh, Stephen Kenny's time in Ireland I could change McCarthy to Kenny and uh, we'll see how they go on but they of course were in the playoff drawn against Iceland and beaten so there will be no Euros for Ireland um, defeat to Iceland. Troy Parrott with the goal. An interesting lineup. Shane Duffy not starting. So uh, slightly disappointing for Ireland. But um, we probably won't be checking back. Mick still in the job of course. Um, football manager did not include the contract arrangement with Stephen Kenny. Um, but yeah, look. We'll cut back. I think we'll jump straight to the midpoint of the season um, after 18 games. Give you a roundup and maybe jump again to the 27 games and then to the end of the season. Um, so we're back, 20 games gone in the season, I can't let it run just a little bit more um, because of the Euros and a few rearrangements like that, but um, we're back, and as you can see, Roddy Collins' Cork City have made a bit of a turnaround, they're off the bottom of the league, but we'll come to them in a minute, as just a minute ago, along the top of the bar as I was simulating, I could see a few little things of interest, so we're going to go first of all with Dundalk, that is an um, absolutely monstrous lead. 14 points ahead of Rovers, who have cut away a little bit from the chasing pack of St. Pat's and Waterford, but still an even bigger back gap back to Shelburne in fifth place. But like we say, we'll start with Dundalk, have a quick look how they're getting on. So when we left them, we were able to see they had just won this game against Pat's and were coming into good form. And as you can see, for just after that Waterford defeat, a huge winning run, only stopped by a draw away to Shelburne before another. So this is some incredible form from Dundalk. I'd be the last person usually to compliment them, with Vinnie Perth clearly doing a fantastic job in this game with a strong Dundalk side. And that translates again in Patrick Hoban, top scorer, only eight goals, not the strongest. But if you look at the average ratings, Hoban, Kolovic, Michael Duffy, the top three, and Chris Shields just below in fourth spot and you have to go all the way down then to fifth before you see a player enter from another team and that's Sam Hughes from Shamrock Rovers the centre half on loan from Leicester um, a quiet season from Jack Byrne while we're here at the halfway point we'll have a look through maybe some of the players who might stand out maybe Jack Byrne's moved on who knows but um, like I said we'll have a quick look at Roddy Collins's Cork City still in the job of course captain Gerald Morrissey key player D. Shane Dawling have they managed to keep some of these loan players um, we'll have a quick check um, they've signed a few players, we'll go through some of the signings. Uh, it appears City have a fairly large squad. We look at their form since Collins 
uh, win against Derry, beating Bowes in daily amount, a draw against Rovers for beating Wexford in the Cup, beaten by Dundalk. But you can see much better form compared to that start of the season under Fenn. I think Fenn was let go, apologies, around about this Sligo game, and a real instant turnaround from Collins. Difficult form recently, but as we come back into the games in July, a couple of tough games in there, but City might be hopeful of staying up. Um, Harps, who were, after a reasonably strong start to the season, picking up a few wins, have really gone downhill. Now, that being said, winning their last two games brings them right back into contention, and there really is a tight relegation scrap. From all the way up to fifth with Shelburne, um, on 23 points, there's only four points separating, as you can see. Like I said, we'll have a quick look at some of the teams, um, perhaps, and see how... I, I can't see. Has he got... Oh, he is here. Jack Byrne. He is staying until the end of the season, of course. But a quiet season. Just three goals and four assists. Maybe something a little bit unrealistic there from football manager. Um, but I suppose his eight goals last season, if he continues that run into the towards the end of the season, he might match something slightly similar. But... Um, uh, back to Jack, he doesn't appear to have uh, added anything to his Irish caps, um, so a quiet year for him, slightly disappointing. Um, so going back now, yeah, like I said, we can maybe have a quick look at the European competitions. Um, coming up, Shamrock Rovers have been drawn against um, Kauno Zalgirls, Zalgirls? Zalgiris, apologies, um, for any Kalu uh, Kauno fans for, uh, in Lithuania, founded in 2004. Um, surely a pretty good draw for Rovers. You'd expect them to come through that. I'm not sure has the um, Europa League updated. Oh, it has. So, Bohemians are in the Europa League facing Apoel Nicosia. A very tough draw. City, obviously not. I was That sometimes game can bug and despite it being the 2020 season, use the 2019 um, European places. And it appears that may have happened for Derry who are not in the European spots. But it is Dundalk who have the Champions League spot and they face Ritteria, another Lithuanian side. So you have Bowes facing against Apoel Nicosia from Cyprus and two other draws against Lithuanian sides for Rovers and Nundalk. So it'll be interesting to see how they get on. Maybe we'll get a group stage run. But um, aside from that, maybe a quick look to transfers for any of these sides. Have they brought in players? Uh, it doesn't appear to, to be the case so far. Waterford bringing in Gary Boylan, Gavin Gunning, um, a couple of signings before the season started. Nothing jumping out. Um, Anthony Gerrard, I believe Stephen Gerrard's cousin, has signed for Cork City for €500 Euros a week. Former Oldham, a bit of an English journeyman, uh, signed by Fenn. An interesting signing, a bit of cover at centre-half. Gary Comerford at Derry, but there might be a few interesting signings during this summer transfer period. Um, obviously, anything jumps out, I'll let you know. But um, yeah, look, I know I've been given estimates of numbers. I probably won't do that again because I keep messing it up. But uh, I'll be back We'll have one more stop and then we'll jump to the end of the season and we'll have a look at how the teams got on in Europe. Okay, we've gone forward a total of seven games and as you can see, absolute magic man that is Roddy Collins. It appears Cork City have been saved. But um, one thing I forgot to in the last bit that I did mention I would look at and I haven't is managerial changes because there has been some managerial changes and I, yeah, manager movements here. It might go. So Neil Fenn sacked due to supporter pressure, as you can see here. Roddy Collins replaces him. Keith Long sacked because of poor league performances, replaced by John Sheridan, former Chesterfield Carla. A very, very strong, experienced manager. A good hire from Bowes, on the surface at least. Uh, Ollie Horgan sacked by Harps, replaced by Shane Keegan, former Galway United um, manager, of course. And Wexford. Liam Buckley also sacked by Sligo for poor league position in June, the same day as Declan Devine was sacked from his position in Derry. Pat Devlin, former Cabin Teeley director of football and UCD director of football, brought into the job on the base of his, on the surface of his stats, perhaps not as uh, strong a hire as um, Keegan or Sheridan. But then Harry Kenny, former Pats manager, brought in to Derry to try and steady the ship after their poor league performances. So that makes it exactly half the teams in the league have let their managers go and we'll go back to it and see how that's gone for teams. So we're in August, 27 uh, games gone for some teams, 5, 25 for Rovers and 26 for others. But like I said, Roddy Collins has pulled Cork City into a mid-table position and maybe an outside shot at Europe. Just uh, nine points off Rovers who do have two games in hand but then 10 off Waterford. Uh, I'll keep myself looking up rather than looking at just the six point gap between them and the playoff spot um, with the games in hand. But we'll look at Dundalk, 
like I said, they just keep expanding this lead. An 18 point lead now at the top of the table for Dundalk. And still, Hoban, Kolovic, Duffy, the three who have dominated the League of Ireland in this football manager simulation, along with Chris Shields in the midfield and Andy Boyle at centre half. And now the top five players in the league taken up by Dundalk. Um, the bookies now saying, yeah, Dundalk, we were wrong. The best shout for a league title. Um, we'll obviously look at the European spots in a minute, but looking down the table, Harps haven't been able to find form despite their two wins on the bounce. They kept it going. They drew at Waterford and beat Rovers before being hammered in against Sligo after a defeat against rivals Derry. Now, another strong win against Cork and before a defeat against Bowes. It looks like inconsistency is their problem. Well, I wonder, will they stay up? Um, and Rover, Sligo Rovers, apologies, being brought, dragged into it after really some horrendous form after a middle a kind of wishy-washy start to the season getting progressively worse and just a very poor run of games here just one win in however many games that is and that being a win away to harps obviously an important win for them but looking through the squads um we'll have to go through transfers as well rovers disappointing dropping off second after opening up a bit of a gap maybe they've lost form jack Byrne. Picking up form slightly, a lot of appearances for him this season with European competition. Playing an unusual formation, um, Rovers, of five at the back with Ferruja and Finn as wing backs. Slightly strange tactics from Bradley. Did it pay off in Europe, however? Uh, they beat Kauno Zalgris 5 0 on aggregate before beating Ujpest uh, 3 2 on aggregate. And now they're in the third round of the Europa League, having beaten by Vittoria Pilsen from Czech Republic. Um, and they have an away leg against them. So a strong performance so far from Rovers in Europe. What about Dundalk in the Champions League? I'm sure that's what we all want to see. Dundalk, Champions League. They beat Riteria 4-1, a strong performance. They beat Bate Borisov, uh, a side not unfamiliar to Irish opposition, um, with a 3-2 uh, win on aggregate after a strong 2 0 home win. And that away goal from Patrick McElhaney proving to be so important. If you go over there with a 2 0 win, then can see two in the first eight minutes to get through is a huge performance from them. And they have a tough game against Basel. But it appears, despite Ricky Van Wolfswick and early Ricky Van Wolfswinkel's early goal, Georgie Kelly's goal has brought him level. And they travel to Bate with a chance to guarantee themselves a group stage spot if they can go through. If not, they will go into the Europa League playoff spot and a strong chance, while being an outside chance, still a chance of a Europa League group stage uh, spot. So Bowles, how did they get on in Europe? Very disappointing. A 5-0 hammering from Apoel Nicosia, who went on to uh, beat Beitar Jerusalem and are now facing... So not a very strong side. Uh, Apoel side, a side that has gotten through the Champions League group stages before, to the best of my knowledge. And I think I saw there that St. Pat's, for some reason, are in Europe. Um, so St. Pat's have uh, gotten a 4-3 defeat to Rad Nicky Nis. Of Serbia um, a very strong side I would say well maybe not so because AIK from Sweden absolutely hammered them to knock them out of Europe so that's that we still have Dundalk and Rovers in contention in Europe the other two eliminated rather convincingly um, but looking to the league table this relegation scrap still very open seven points separating Bowes to Harps and Shelburne being dragged into it perhaps a poor run of form might see Ian Morris under a little bit of pressure but looking to Cork City First, we'll see, has there been any transfers? There has. Keith Keane, uh, former Ipswich Town man, if I'm correct. Sorry, not Ipswich, Luton Town. Uh, and Preston, right back, turned defensive midfielder, uh, has been signed, along with Kevin Foley, former Irish international, signed from Billericay Town on a uh, short-term deal, I assume. And Stephen Best, former Bowes centre-half, and or signed from Inchicore Athletic. And having a good start with Cork City, despite actually only playing in their under-19. Oh no, apologies, he has made appearances in the league. So, how about any other any of the other teams? We'll go to Derry. Derry have signed Sean Boyd uh, from Longford, and they have signed Kevin Healy. Um, Dundalk bringing in Daryl Murphy, another former Irish international, 37-year-old Daryl Murphy. Surely he'll fire a few goals for a strong Dundalk side. No signings for Harps. Connor Carty, former Wolves man, coming in to Shamrock Rovers. Um, and it, nothing really standing out. I think former city man Owen Stokes brought in here, of course. Um, George McAniff signing, former Arsenal man signing for uh, Waterford. So some strong signings, some good players coming in. But um, not too many big names. Daryl Murphy, probably the standout. 
um, or as Bowe signing Dutch 20 year old from Chelsea on loan um, Juan Castillo a left wing back former Ajax player he's gone from making appearances for Ajax in the Eredivisie to playing for Bowes in the League of Ireland surely another strong contender um, to, to for Bowes as they maybe look to make a run for Europe but look like I said um, that's probably the last update we'll give you before the end of the season a uh, quick look down to the first division who's looking at coming up a very strong season from Galway United sees them top with Drogheda at the closest in the chasing pack followed by UCD and Longford with Bray having an outside shot of a playoff spot Shamrock Rovers 2 not having a very good season just the two wins beating Cabin Teeley and Wexford um, so like I said an interesting uh, start so far Galway running away with it uh, along with Drogheda it appears the two gunning for the title and whoever does not get the title will very much be the favourite in this playoff but it'll be interesting to see the relegation playoff and a quick look towards the extra.ie FAI Cup we're still not in the first round but we will also look to that the EA Sports Cup the finals between Drogheda and Bray or Dundalk so Drogheda beating Derry so a possibility of an all uh, first division cup uh, EA Sports Cup final but Dundalk will clearly be the favourites against Bray which is played the 15th of August currently in the game we are at the 12th so quite an interesting simulation um, Cork City winning the Munster Senior Cup uh, still not finished the Leinster Senior Cup or have we uh, we probably have oh we have Dundalk have beaten Bowes 4-1 just a few weeks back and the President's Cup as we saw earlier so one last look will be towards the Ireland squad is Mick still in charge he is have we seen anything interesting no not much from Ireland more of the same under Mick hopefully a bit of change can be seen under Stephen Kenny but we'll just have a quick look as to see who won the Euro 2020 so the UEFA European Championship was won by Spain against Portugal if we can make a quick look at the tournament tree um, if we go back we can see uh, that Spain beat Portugal in the final who, after beating Switzerland in the semi-final who knocked out Germany and Poland on their way uh, aside from that not too many surprises perhaps Norway beating Croatia Russia Apologies, another big, big, big um, team to get to the final, or semi final apologies, having beaten Italy on penalties before getting a nicer draw against Norway, uh, against Norway before losing to Portugal. So, a rather interesting tournament there. Obviously, Ireland were not in contention, but might be a quick, a nice one for you to have a look at. And um, if you would be interested in perhaps an Ireland foot manager save or experiment, do leave a comment. I'd be delighted to uh, bring that to you, whether it be me as manager or possibly putting Stephen Kenny in charge and just simulating either or would always be possible so like i said we'll go back to let's put cork in as it's the easiest way to get back to the league of ireland for me didn't look too easy there so like i said we'll have we'll be back at the last game of the season we'll have a look at how things stand jump forward to how things ended and maybe have a quick look at the fei cup as well so i'll see you back here just in a sec we're back one game left in the season obviously you can see the head of you Roddy Collins dream team at Cork City hasn't quite come to fruition they are back down in ninth spot going into the final game of the season it's between them and Shelburne um, an old rivalry rekindled at the wrong end of the table at this time uh, going into the final game of the season as you can see Harps already down Dundalk already champions Rovers and Bowes both guaranteed a European spot the last one going between Pats and Waterford level on points going into the final game of the season It'll be an interesting one. We'll have a quick look um, at how the side has gone on in Europe, Dundalk and Rovers. Um, perhaps that'll be why Dundalk have dropped off slightly. A few more defeats. Um, Patrick Hoban only scoring 13 goals and picking up the uh, the top scorer award, on, uh, barring a miracle from one of Aaron Green or Tim Nilsson. But um, just a quick look, we'll see that Dundalk were unfortunate. They were beaten 3-0 by Basel and going out by just a single goal to not get a Europa League group stage spot and going to Shamrock Rovers I think we can expect the same yep beaten 5-1 on aggregate in the third round so a strong Irish performance in those European spots um, it's always tough for football manager to get those through but um, look Rovers have taken a big turn and that is a, because of a huge surprise appointment if we look at their managers Stephen Bradley sacked after just over four years in charge because of their poor performance this season and John Caulfield has come in and in his six games in charge he's won five showing up Cork City just how wrong they were to sack him an amazing turnaround from Caulfield if you look at those six games he's lost to Dundalk of course but that's four five six 
he came in he's won Waterford Harps Dundalk defeat there but Rovers Pats Sligo Rovers sorry Pats and Shelburne so strong wins can he get out with another win away to Derry um, it'd be an interesting one maybe to see uh, a slightly surprising managerial appointment I'm not sure how realistic it is we'll just have a quick check was that the only sacking yes so six of the ten teams changing managers throughout the season a few interesting hirings Roddy Collins at City with obviously his uh, his great start but we'll have to see how he gets on with the final game of the season and then we'll jump to see the FAI Cup final but uh, if you liked it again like I said leave a like and leave a comment uh, what you'd like to see next but I'll be back in just a moment with the results from the final game and we're back usually I take you in to the to league table to start but I haven't seen how the league plays out um, we have Joe Gamble accepting a Cork City offer we'll see where they finished um, we won't we'll go to Dundalk and we'll see from there who went down we're overs we're sorry we're City able to pip Sh uh, Shelburne to that 8th spot they weren't Cork City Shelburne did drop points only picking up a point uh, drawing with St. Pat's 0-0 but City unable to get a win against Waterford despite Kevin Foley's best efforts poor performance from City overall not much going forward a 4-4-2 Sorry, a 4-1-3-2 from Collins being played, and it wasn't enough. So, Harps down, City in ninth spot. Okay, we're back. The first attempt at recording this, the whole thing done, uh, edited. And unfortunately, the FAI Cup final and relegation playoff bit corrupted. So, um, that wasn't ideal. But here we are. We'll see how the relegation playoff went second time round. I won't let you know how it went the first time round. But um, here we go. So, here Cork City have not been relegated. They have successfully beaten the relegation playoff with a 3-2 win um, in the playoff against Drogheda. Now, that is exactly the same way it went in the last game, except this time City requiring added time, slightly um, surprisingly. But uh, look, as you can see here, a poor end to the season. Roddy Collins, they've managed to stay up just about by the skin of their teeth. So that means that Cork City are in the Premier Division along with everyone aside from Harps who will be replaced by uh, Galway uh, who obviously won the league looking down to the cup final Dundalk narrowly beating Finn Harps uh, Harps fans travelling sport no doubt sickened by that but just as a bit of an overview to the season Patrick Hoban awarded player of the season with a very strong average rating just ahead of Michael Duffy and Kalovic and you can very much tell that it is a league dominated by Dundalk this season. John Caulfield's um, Jamrock Rovers, of course, um, with a bit of a resurgence towards the end of the season. If I can scroll down, a 3 0 away win against Derry will certainly have um, teams like Dundalk looking and going, oh, this is, could be a team to be reckoned with. I'd be interested to see how John Caulfield would handle a player like Jack Byrne. But aside from that, it's been a. Um, Fairly standard season, I would say. Not too many surprises. Perhaps Derry's drop, a surprise. Uh, Watford getting the European spot ahead of Pats. Uh, we probably would have had Derry in there myself as a prediction. But um, look, overall, like I said, a fairly fairly um, by the numbers prediction. City and Shells um, looked to be two of the weaker sides, along with Harps and probably Sligo in real life. But between Sligo and City, just six points uh, of a gap. And I think that's that's um, that says a lot. If people would like to see a season two, maybe see how Roddy Collins' Cork City continue, uh, how John Coffey's Shamrock Rovers do, whether Dundalk can continue to just dominate under Vinnie Part, I'd be happy to do it. Um, just leave a comment, leave a like, let me know. Um, but aside from that, look, it's been a great. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Please do, like I said, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought of it, and um, hope you and yours are keeping safe. That's all from me. Thanks for checking out. Make sure to subscribe. Cheers.